On April 29th, Medieval Combat Slasher Mordow hit Steam. Originating as a Kickstarter and developed and published by Triturnian, Mordow has rocketed up Steam's player charts. Rocketed so quickly, its servers have been unable to handle the unexpected flood of player traffic. Absent latency, Mordow is very good. 64 player medieval warfare across large maps with impressively detailed and precise combat. There's definitely room to grow, a few more maps would be nice, and I think some game modes could be better structured, but in general, it's great, chaotic, and really fun. I don't mean to glaze over Mord Howe's troubled servers, they are a problem, but I think its sudden success and rush of players highlights and is indicative of a deeper topic. Mord Howe's visceral medieval combat was a consumer demand that wasn't being met, and is yet another genre to be resurrected, if not established, by a small developer, rather than the better funded, stronger built AAA industry, which has the resources to lead the industry industry and innovate, but instead chooses to follow. 2012's Chivalry Medieval Warfare was the last game to attempt the semi-grounded large-scale medieval battles Mordhau does so well, also developed and published by a smaller independent developer. Since then, 2017's For Honor, in my estimation, is the closest the AAA industry has gotten to something akin to Mordhau and Chivalry, and even while similar, I'd argue For Honor is more different than it is alike. The AAA industry has a supply and demand problem, though not supply and demand in the traditional sense. In recent years, we've seen a constant stream of small, often independent and or crowdfunded developers fill markets for which the AAA industry, for a variety of aggravating reasons, largely refuses to participate. Pillars of Eternity and Divinity Original Sin both began as Kickstarter projects and, since releasing, weren't only commercially and critically successful, but injected AAA-level quality into a genre that hadn't seen it in years. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say Divinity and Pillars revitalized an entire genre that was previously dormant. Similarly, in the late 90s and early 2000s, franchises like SOCOM, Rainbow Six, and Ghost Recon were the AAA industry's answer to consumer demand for slower-paced, realistic tactical shooters. Of course, in the last decade or so, AAA support in this area has worn thin. SOCOM's no longer around, and Rainbow Six and Ghost Recon are now much more casual, mass-market friendly, and live service friendly IPs. Like with top-down RPGs, smaller studios have stepped up with the AAA industry turned away. Insurgency Sandstorm, Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, Onward, Postscriptum Squad, and more. All good games made by relatively smaller studios fill a market the AAA industry could compete in but chooses not to. And this happens because, in general, the process by which the AAA industry picks which demand to supply is broken. There's a sizable disparity between the games the AAA industry annually produces and the variety of demand that exists for different genres of video games. The tsunami of World War II shooters in the early 2000s and the modern military craze of the mid-2000s didn't happen because a bunch of developers suddenly had great ideas for war games. They were reactions to popular market trends. This phenomenon persists even even today with the battle royale and looter shooters. This doesn't necessarily mean all these games are bad, nor that there isn't a demand for them, there absolutely is. On some level, games made to appeal to large audiences are not unreasonable. Practically speaking, AAA budgets are bigger and therefore require higher returns on investment. In this instance, products that appeal to the masses, like looter shooters, don't only help, but are necessary. And the consumer demand for them exists. Top Top-down RPGs and tactical shooters aren't the first genres to come to mind, at least to my mind, when discussing game genres that appeal to the mass market. It wouldn't make sense if Electronic Arts, Activision, Blizzard, or Ubisoft suddenly shifted the totality of their assets into niche game development. Safe, formulaic games that appeal to large audiences have their place in the video game ecosystem. For this, there is no debate. But does this mean these corporate AAA colossi can't invest into smaller markets at all? That did it's absolutely financially impossible to support any niche consumer demand? I don't buy that for a second. A few AAA companies do have divisions made specifically to support smaller developers and smaller market products. EA's Originals program is a great and surprisingly philanthropic example. But even with programs like EA Originals, I still feel it's fair to say that the greater AAA industry lacks value and initiative. That the industry's choices of which consumer demands to support 
apply and which to ignore are not always based on quality of creativity, quality of product, or quality of the medium itself. If Mordow were published by Activision, Blizzard, or Microsoft, would that guarantee that server problems wouldn't exist? Of course not. The AAA industry isn't immune to laggy launches either. But if given the choice between the industry as we have it now versus another version that's diversified and endeavors to produce new and original content, I'd go with the latter. The video game industry would be better if its AAA sector focused more on creativity and less on monetization. If the AAA industry took on more projects that aren't required or altered to be live service friendly or have long monetization tales. Demand for different kinds of video games is there, and Mordhau is just one example. It's ultimately up to the supplier to maintain their end of the industry. 